In this part, we'll look at a troubleshooting problem in a water deaerator system. The system is designed to remove dissolved oxygen and other gases from a supply of water. The deaerated water is then fed to a boiler. Before we get to troubleshooting the problem in the system, let's take a look at the deaerator system PNID to see how the system operates. This is the PNID that represents the deaerator system. This symbol represents a heat exchanger that heats the water. This one represents the deaerator itself. And this one represents a deaerated water storage tank. Water flows into the heat exchanger, which uses steam to heat the water. Then the water flows out of the heat exchanger past this device. This symbol represents a local temperature indicator that indicates the temperature of the water leaving the heat exchanger. Next, the water flows through an arrangement of valves. This particular valve is called a level control valve. It's called a level control valve because its purpose is to control the level in the storage tank. From the valve arrangement, the water enters the deaerator. Steam is supplied to the deaerator through a gate valve. In the deaerator, the steam strips dissolve gases from the water. The steam and gases leave through this vent line and deaerated water flows out of the deaerator to the storage tank. The deaerated water storage tank has a temperature indicator, a level gauge, and a level transmitter. The level transmitter is connected to a level controller and to a level alarm system. The controller is connected to the deaerator level control valve that regulates the flow of water into the deaerator. Steam is supplied to the deaerator through a gate valve. In the deaerator, the steam strips dissolve gases from the water. The steam and gases leave through this vent line. And deaerated water flows out of the deaerator to the storage tank. The deaerated water storage tank has a temperature indicator, a level gauge, and a level transmitter. The level transmitter is connected to a level controller and to a level alarm system. The controller is connected to the deaerator level control valve that regulates the flow of water into the deaerator. These symbols represent level switches that are connected by electrical signal lines to this remote level alarm. If the level in the storage tank gets too high or too low, one of the level switches activates the alarm. The deaerated water leaves the storage tank through this line. Now let's look at the troubleshooting problem. In this example, the level alarm on the deaerated water storage tank indicates that the level in the tank is either too high or too low. So the first thing to do is determine the actual level. That's done by checking the level gauge on the tank. In this case, when the level gauge on the storage tank is checked, the level is found to be okay. Next, we need to consider the possible causes of the false level alarm. Let's identify the components that could cause the alarm to incorrectly indicate a level problem in the tank. First, we could check the level transmitter. If there's a problem in the transmitter, it may send a false signal to the other instruments in the level control system. The pneumatic lines that connect the instruments in the level control system can be checked for leaks or damage that could interfere with the signal transmission. The low level switch and the high level switch should be checked to see if they're working properly. Since the level alarm has been activated, the level alarm and its connections to the level switches should be okay. When the components in the system are checked, the problem turns out to be a faulty level transmitter that's sending a false high level signal to the rest of the components in the control system. In this case, the alarm alerted us to a problem early enough that we were able to locate the problem before it had a major effect on the operation of the system. In this part of the program, we've used PNIDs to troubleshoot operating problems in a water treatment system and a boiler water deaerator system. Try some practice questions now on using PNIDs to troubleshoot system problems.